Hello, my name's Pete Jennings and welcome to this talk on wood woes. As well as taking them in the wild woods, you can find wood woes in churches. And as you can see from these three pictures here, typically on the tower, the entrance porch spandrels, or the font. Um, so the one from St Mary's Woolpit um, actually broke off down from the tower. Um, but, uh, it's a bit nearer to see, isn't it? So you can see the um, greenery um, and so on over the greenery or the fur, um, depending on your interpretation. Then there's the one over the um, door um, of the porch, St Michael's in Pease and Hall. You can see he's got a little shield and he's got a club. And the other side of that porch will be either a wyvern, which is a two-legged dragon or a dragon which is four-legged and then on St Mary's font Barking and Suffolk these are the most ones that you see most really um, around a font um, with a club uh, sometimes the club is pointing up sometimes it's down and all these carvings tend to be on churches from the 14th 15th century all the ones that I've investigated in Suffolk, uh, certainly, uh, where these were well over 50. Here you can see a couple of fine woodwows captured at the weird and wonderful wood event at Hawley in Suffolk. And my definition of a woodwose is a full-bodied wild man figure, mostly found carved in stone or wood, and particularly concentrated within Suffolk churches. They are also found in other counties and countries across Europe. The figure is usually seen as naked, but covered with hair and a long beard, grasping a club. There are occasionally female woodwows found as well. The woodwows can be wild and exuberant or stationary and sentient, but they're always a little enigmatic and a part of that dark other world. Variants of woodwows include having a shield, standing, sitting, kneeling, having cross legs, and they can also be seen fighting a dragon or being attacked by a lion. Very occasionally, they may ride a horse or other animal. Sometimes they just get into your head and stay there. So, here are some Suffolk font variants. Um, first one from St Michael Framlingham, where the woodwoes are alternated with lions, which is We've got St Mary Virgin Halesworth, where it's cross-legged, a bit like the tarot hanged man, um, and it's got a shield. St John Baptist Saxmundham, there's no alternating figures, it's just blanks there. And then St Martin Lacton, um, the woodwows appear to have turbans and clubs pointing up and down. Um, different people have come up with different ideas about the clubs pointing up and down. Um, if they're up, they're there to attack, if they're down, they're there to defend, um, was one of the ideas, but who really knows? So, here is slightly damaged woodwows on a font at St Peter's Church, Beberton, in Suffolk. And uh, invariably, people say, oh, that's Cromwell's lot done that. Well, it might have been, but not necessarily. Um, some woodwows have been deliberately vandalised by religious zealots in the past. Um, but you've got reformers carrying out edicts from Edward VI in the 15th century, um, so just after woodwows had been created. Henry VIII in the 16th century, or Oliver Cromwell in the 17th century. Um, all of those um, periods, there's people going around knocking um, away what they thought were unholy images. And then, of course, others have had accidental damage and um, particularly on exterior walls have been eroded just by time and weather. As I said, um, Woodwows mounted on the outside of churches, particularly up on the roof on the towers, are much more prone to damage from weathering. Um, and here's a few variants um, on the left from Suffolk, Kelsale, St Mary and St Peter. 
um, sitting there. Um, in the middle of rather a splendid one from Mendelsham, St. Mary's Church, you've got a sort of radiate head. And on the right, um, in Haverhill, Suffolk, um, St. Mary's Church, um, and this is generally the view that you get from them on church towers. They're so high up, you can't see them in detail unless you're actually up there. And um, want that pigeon that's in the picture sitting on the edge, um, or unless you've got a wonderful um, telephoto lens. So um, many of them don't get seen terribly well. Every woodwose is definitely male. Um, sometimes it's rather difficult to work out whether they're male or female. But um, here's a couple of definitely female examples. Um, Mary's in Harkstead, out on the Shotley Peninsula in Suffolk. Um, some rather lovely ones. And um, also from Ludham in Norfolk, there on the right. Uh, thanks to St. Bell Thomas for that picture. Some of the most beautifully detailed woodwose can be found on the spandrels of doorways, which are those little triangular bits to either side. Uh, most of these are on church porches, but can occur up inside the church roof uh, and hard to see on high cross beams. Um, so you get woodwose fighting a dragon on opposite spandrels of the entrance of St Mary's Cratfield, one of my favourite ones. Um, more often they're shown opposing two-legged wyverns. Not all woodwows are carved in stone. Some woodwows' heads are made of wood on the bench ends or finials. And that type of bench end you can see either on the top left, the sort of poppy head type. You can sometimes go into a church, see loads of poppy head bench ends, and then suddenly you find that just one of them has got the face on it of a woodwow, wild man, whatever you like to call them. Um, the Harder to find are the ones carved onto the misericord beneath the seats for church officials near to the altar. If you, it's to relieve them of standing unaided for long periods. You've got to remember some services usually go on for hours and hours, and as people got elderly, you know, a bit of a problem for standing that long. And of course, the trouble is you have to tip up the seats to find them, which you're not always able to do in, in some churches. But you can find some beautiful. Um, Woodwows on misery cords, plus lots of other wonderful animals as well. Not too many woodwows are seen with animals, but here's a splendid chap mounted on a horse from Toledo in Spain, because these do happen on the continent as well. And a drawing for a stained glass made by Albrecht uh, Dürer in Germany in 1520. Um, unfortunately, the stained glass does not appear to um, have survived, but his drawing um, has. Well, they seem to have looked at rather a lot of woodwows so far, but um, what about some early references and etymology? There's a variety of spellings, including woodwows, woodwows, woodwas, and used to describe the creature. Woodwatha, which is Middle English, modwoo, 
is a word employed in several Old English vocabularies as a gloss for a satyr, fawn, and sylvanus. Wudu means wood or forest, but the second part is contested, possibly being or orphan. Up on the left there, you can see a fragment of Gilgamesh, the story of Gilgamesh from 2100 BC. He uh, probably is the earliest reference to a wild man is the character Enkidu from the ancient Mesopotamian epic of Gilgamesh. He was created by the creator goddess Haruru from clay and water to teach King Gilgamesh not to be so arrogant. Initially, he lives out there wild, eating grass, moving with the animals. Um, eventually, his founders, the one releasing animals from traps by, by hunters. Um, and so King Gilgamesh sends a holy temple prostitute called Shamha to subdue him, which he does by having sex with him for a week. That's my sort of trap. Um, Enkidu can no longer mix with his animal friends because he cannot lose the scent of the Lady Shamat from him, though he is taught about civilization. And he's tempted into a wrestling match with Gilgamesh. And from that, the pair become great friends. We've also got the story of Gawain and the Green Knight. Now, the Green Knight is called a wood voice in the Arthurian tale of 1390, which fits better with a whole person. Uh, rather than just a green man head. And of course, he then gets lopped off in the story and they um, face each other one year upon the next. Um, but there's also a character called Om Omnifrius. Uh, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but anyway, he's alleged to be the patron saint of Wood Roses. He was a Christian hermit who lived in the Egyptian desert for 60 years in the 4th century, with thick body hair and clothes of leaves. Now, Onufrius was depicted in a 1520 painting by Hans Gefrein uh, with a full suit of leaves, but later images show him with just a loincloth of foliage, such as this Spanish picture. Professor Anne Barton, who's a Shakespearean scholar, says that Shakespeare's interest in wild men seems to have extended throughout his writing career, taking in Oliver in As You Like It, Timon in Timon of Athens, The Dancers in Bohemia, uh, The Winter's Tale, Caliban in The Tempest, Cardenio in The History of Cardenio, and in a sense, Hearn the Hunter in The Merry Wives of Windsor. Around right about the same time as Shakespeare was writing his plays, um, there was a very, very popular poem called The Fairy Queen by Spencer and um, it was written in 1596 and it highlights at different points sort of opposite behaviours uh, of a wood woes. One is as a protector and another one as a lusty rapist and cannibal. Um, can't have it always I suppose. So um, the illustrations down here show some of this. Um, on the left you've got the Smithfield of Bethcrete, um, from France uh, in uh, 1300, and on the right you've got ancient woodwalls are chasing dogs from 14th century drollery in Queen Mary's Sulphur. These woodwalls can be quite militaristic, I suppose, at times. The uh, uh, left there you see uh, woodwows, um, arboreal woodwows from the Book of Hours from Brunard in France, um, 15th century. In the middle from the Sherborne Missile, um, you've got a couple of woodwows fighting each other, and um, one, if you've seen him, is holding his head, but still fighting with his sword. It's a bit like that Monty Python uh, thing with the, with the knight sort of with his arms and legs cut off. Um, then on the right, um, Inkusen in the uh, Netherlands. Um, <laughs> I like to show this one because I think he's a bit gay. Um, yeah, he's got the big club across his shoulder, but the way he's standing there with his hands on hips and, uh, and, and his hips going to one, one side, you know, it's a little bit of fat. I, I think. Uh, maybe that's just me.
And for something completely different, a 15th century Bolden Woodwose spoon handle. So you've got to imagine a spoon at the bottom of him as well. And this was found in Woodbridge, Suffolk, um, only a year or two ago. Now, exceptionally, a wild man figure is incorporated into a non-religious context, um, such as the lounge wall of the Old Bull Inn in Long Melford, Suffolk, um, which you, you can see um, in the pub. Um, there's a 14th century ivory casket held at the Barber Institute, Birmingham, um, which has woodwows on it, and also on the eaves of a house at Clare in Suffolk. Um, which if you go to the church that Claire the big church which has got lots of green men and so on in it, um this house and the eaves are just opposite the church main doorway. Um I suspect that there are many more unrecorded examples of woodwows in private places because they don't tend to get recorded like churches. All people will know they're there, but it's never been written down or stuck on the internet or whatever. Um, so um, I'm always keen to find woodwows in other places. Woodwows are featured within the heraldic arms of individuals across Europe, and on the left there. You can see the coat of arms for Kyberg in Switzerland with wild man and woman supporters. On the right, you can see the Duchess of Kent arms for England. Now, it's erroneously said in some books that the Duke of Edinburgh has a woodwose and a coat of arms. And that, I can tell you, is definitely incorrect. I still think this. And the figure uh, is described by the College of Arms as Hercules girt about the loins with a lion skin, crowned with a chaplet of oak leaves holding in the dexter hand a club, which relates to um, Prince Philip's Greek origin. Inevitably, I suppose, um, wild men and women and woodwows tend to be conflated all together are an interesting subject for artists. And uh, here's just a few historic examples. Um, we've got a wild man abducting a woman by Albert Dürer uh, from 1516. Hans Holbein, the younger, a sketch of some stained glass, um, uh, a second. Um, a Fight in the Forest, Hans Berkemer, uh, about 1520 that one comes from, and on the far right, The Wild Man with the Shield um, by Martin Schoenger in 1490. Sometimes, just like the images of the wild man, the green man, woodwows, the stories get merged together. Um, Orford in Suffolk has got a splendid tale of a merman who was caught up in fishermen's nets and confined in the castle, fed on fish, and, um, well, after being displayed to the public for a little while, um, he escaped in the sea and swam off after giving a cheery wave to everybody. Um, and uh, therefore, it's rather interesting to find that you've got woodwows on the font of Bartholomew's church in Orford. Unfortunately, though, if you look closely at the woodwows, he doesn't have a fishing tail. Um, in fact, he, he sort of seems to be a little bit stumpy, the sort of uh, garden gnome version of a woodwows there, um, not being rude to him. Yeah, nice, nice grin and a, and a big stick. But there, you know. Storytellers will uh, do anything for a good tale, won't they?
Woodrow has found his way onto this 15th century tapestry on the top left, um, but also uh, onto the lateral Psalter uh, from the UK on the upper right. And in the bottom left, we see a picture um, thought to be after Pieter Brugio in 1566, where there's, well, a wall band with a club, a wood woe, um, and he appears to be enacting a folk tradition. And, well, this folk tradition seems to have been quite popular in several parts of um, Europe, um, but particularly France and Germany. So, illustrated on this slide are a number of old man, green man traditional folk customs from various countries. Are they badly remembered fragments of revering our woodland spirits? Who knows? In the Golden Bough, Fraser describes a Whitsuntide custom in Thuringian in Germany where a young man is dressed in leaves and hides in a wood. Villagers find him and shoot him with blank muskets. And he is revived by a clever doctor in a way that's very much like the plots of English mummers plays and tied to a wagon. He's then paraded around the village with tales of how they've chased a wild man from the wood and gifts are given to the dancers and actors. And so you can see here, um, wild man dancers on the top left from Oberstdorf in Bavaria. Next to them, um, a glass window from Strasbourg Cathedral. The Krampus has become popular in the UK over um, recent years, um, but comes more from uh, Germany and that area. And then over on the far right, um, the Polish Makadula, um, which looks a wonderful. Um, down on the bottom left, the L'Homme Sauvage and the Wild Woman from France. Um, and not forget, of course, that some carnivals used to figure um, woodwows and wild man and green man figures. Um, it's a costume um, for um, a wild woman. Um, woodwows there from the Nuremberg Carnival, um, the costume dating to 1590. And finally, of course, in the UK, we have our Hastings Jack in the Green Festival and lots of other green men um, associated with Morris sides and so on. So uh, despite everything, seems as alive today as it's ever been. So if you're interested in the wood woes in Suffolk and beyond, um, the title of a book I've written, a um, uh, pictorial guide, um, there's over 50 Woodrow sites in Suffolk, and it costs a mere fifteen pounds or four fifty six for the Kindle. Um, so that's one to check out, and uh, why not check out Woodrow's in your own area? Uh, certainly, there's plenty more in Norfolk and in Lincolnshire uh, and so on, but they can be found all around the country. In fact, they can be found, as I said, um, right across the Europe. There's some details of lots of the other books that I've written. So if you've got Woodworths, you know, you could always get another one. Um, 
lots of stuff I've written and uh, you can find my website which will give descriptions of them all and links to Amazon where they mostly sold from but in the meantime thanks very much for your interest and um, having a watch of this guy today bye bye